Welcome you all in your own YouTube channel of Skill Rasta Institute of Technology for the unlimited conceptual and practical knowledge about the construction industry. In this video, we are going to learn the design of two-way slab. So let's start with the plan. So I'm going to design a terrace slab for the recreational room of the hostel building. I'm talking about this particular slab which we are going to design. So let's take that particular slab and write down the basic information about the slab. So let me select the marker. So room length is 6 meter. Room width is 5 meter. The support of the beam width is 230 mm on all the sides. Grade of concrete is M20 and grade of steel is FE 500. So before starting with the basic design, first we need to check it is which type of a slab. So we can easily able to do the same by checking the length to width ratio and I am getting 1.2 which is less than 2. So we are going to do the design for a two-way slab. So the first step is calculate the minimum depth or we can say calculate the overall depth by deflection method. So the formula is DO equals to shorter span upon 30. So shorter span is 5000 divided by 30 and I'm getting a value of 166.7 but overall depth to in the site it is very difficult to keep 166.7 so I'm going to make it as a 170 mm now calculating the effective depth there is a basic difference between the design of a one-way and a two-way slab in two-way slab every time we need to decide on both the sides that is for a longer span and also for a shorter span. So for while calculating the effective depth, we will try to understand how it varies for a two-way design. So we are able to see in the diagram that is the DO, that is the overall depth from here to here. When I am calculating the DEXX, so it is DO minus, here is the clear cover, minus half of the bar. So if I'm going to deduct the from DO, the complete part, if I'm going to deduct this much of part, so I'm going to get a DEXX. Now what is the DEYY? DEYY is DEXX minus half of the bar, means this half and this half. So this, this part will be deducted, that is equals to almost die of one bar. So that is equals to DYY, that is DEXX minus one bar diameter. So in this uh, consideration, we are going to consider 10 mm bar and we are going to cover the clear cover as a 15 mm. So DXX equals to DO minus clear cover minus half of the die of the bar. So putting the value, I'm getting 150 mm and DYY equals to DX minus bar diameter, one bar diameter. So that is equals to 140 mm. Calculate the effective span that is LE. We are having uh, two conditions. So we need to select the least of the following. Right? So let's try to understand with a diagram. So the first condition is center to center between the supports. So let me select the highlighter. So half the center from this support of the beam and from this support. So total distance is the value of my A condition that is 230 mm beam is so half of that is 115 mm plus 5000 plus 115 mm that will become a value of 5.230 on the B part is clear span plus effective depth so clear span is 5000 plus effective depth we have already calculated that is 150 so value becomes 5.150 for a longer span, similarly the two conditions are there, but this time we are going to take a longer span part. So I'm going to take this patch from here to here. So center to center distance between the support is similar way we are going to get 6.230 plus the B part is clear span plus effective depth. So 6000 plus effective depth that is of a longer span, it is 140 mm. So addition of both of them and we are getting 6.10. So we are, I have highlighted the 
list of the following of the both the conditions on a longer span also on a shorter span also now let's calculate the load so we're having a four types of a load for calculation of a two-way slab the first is the self weight of the slab so i'm going to multiply the width multiply the overall depth by the density of the concrete so density of the concrete is 25 mm the second is waterproofing load i'm considering that there is a 75 mm brick bat coba waterproofing so that's why it is 0.075 multiplied by density of the brick similarly floor finish load so i'm assuming a 25 mm floor tile and 25 mm thickness of the concrete mortar screed so it is adding of both of them multiplied by the density of the concrete so live load i'm going to take as a 4 so addition of all that is going to lead me a total weight that equals to 10.93 kN per meter we have already seen the length by width ratio that is basically the r now calculating the total load along both the span that is along longer span and a shorter span on a longer span the formula is w y equals to w upon 1 plus r is to 4 so this r is the calculated value the length by width proportion so i'm going to put that value w we have already calculated that is 10.93 so just putting the value i'm getting 3.55 kN per meter along shorter span the formula is wx equals to w minus wy so w is the total load that is 10.93 and wy which we already calculated that is 3.55 so remaining will be part will be go for a shorter span that is 7.38 kN so this is the total load which we have calculated now we need to calculate the design load so design load is simple once you calculate the load we need to multiply by 1.5 so along the longer span we are getting 5.4 kN per meter and along shorter span again multiplying the total load by 1.5 I am getting 11.1 .1 kN per meter now let's calculate the maximum bending moment so the formula for maximum bending moment is FD multiplied by L square upon 8 so when I am taking a, along a longer span I need to take all the values that is factor load effective length of a longer span only so just putting the value which we already calculated I am getting 25.44 kN per meter along shorter span I am getting the same formula I need to put all the values which we have already calculated for a shorter span and I am deriving with a value of 36.8 kN per meter but for my further calculation I required all the values in Newton and mm so I'm just going to convert that kilonewton to Newton that is 10 to 3 and meter to mm again 10 to 3 so it becomes 10 to 6 now check for the depth so while checking the depth I need to consider the maximum bending moment so that if it is safer for the maximum bending moment it can be easily safe so formula is MR equals to 0 0.134 fck into b into d square so where fck is 20 newton per mm square and b equals to 1000 mm so i'm just putting the values so in the equation all the values are known to me which we already calculated only one unknown is there so i can easily able to calculate the defective so i'm getting a defective equals to 117.18 mm which is less than 150 mm so d calculated is less than d assume so i can easily say the section is safe in the depth to reside to register bend calculate the ast uh, for a 10 mm bar again we are going to consider for both the span that is longer span and a shorter span so formula let me select the highlighter so formula is ast along the longer span equals to moment of resistance divided by 0 0.81 de into 0 0.87 fy where fy is the 500 newton per mm square so putting the value which we already calculated i am getting a value of 5 515.72 mm square now calculating the spacing between the steel bars the formula is area of one bar multiplied by 1000 upon ast so we know how to calculate the area of one bar that is pi d square upon 4 where d is the dia of the bar so i am taking as a 10 tor so I'm putting the value for 10 mm I'm getting the area of 1 bar equals to 
5 mm square so just putting the value into the formula i am getting the spacing between the rebars is 152.21 mm center to center but it is not logically possible to put into the side so i'm going to put on the lower side because we need to understand that whenever we are putting the spacing i am never going to take a more value because if i am increasing the spacing i am decreasing the number of the rebar and which is can be dangerous for my structures for taking the spacing we should always remember we need to take her on a lower side similarly along for a shorter span the formula is mr upon 0.81 de into 0.87 fy so putting the value into the formula which we already calculated we are getting a uh, area of a steel equals to 696.28 mm square so calculating the spacing between the rebars just putting the value i am getting 112.74 so i am considering as a 110 mm center to center so now i need to check whether whatever the spacing i am going to provide it is the maximum spacing within the permissible limit by the is code so we are for checking the same i i need to consider list of the following so the first condition is 3 de so i'm getting 450 mm and second condition is 300 mm so in both of them the list is 300 mm so that is the maximum spacing provided by the is code and i am providing 150 mm and 110 mm so my values are within the permissible limit by the is code now calculate the adst for a 8 tor now formula for adst equals to 0.12 percentage of the cross sectional area so just i am going to put into the formula 0.12 percentage means divided by 100 multiply by cross sectional area that's why overall depth multiplied by the width so just putting the values into the formula i am getting 204 mm square now calculating the spacing in the similar way we done previously for a ast area for one bar multiplied by 1000 upon ast so for 8 mm bar i am getting the area of one bar equals to 50.3 so by putting the values into the formula i am getting 246. 57 so i'm going to make it as 245 mm center to center now calculating the maximum spacing allowed as per the is code we are having a criteria of 5 de putting the value i'm getting 750 mm and 500 mm the least is 500 mm and i am providing 245 mm so it is within the permissible limit allowed by the is code once we have done with that now the final part is preparing the schedule and the sketch for the same so you can pause the video and you can look after how i have done the cross sectional diagram and scheduling of the same if you really like or learn something new kindly subscribe to our channel for the unlimited conceptual and practical knowledge about the construction industry you can also follow us on instagram and facebook link is in the description thank you for watching see you in the next video